Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Forge, your place for gaming news, reviews, and content. Today is going to be the first video in a series of guides for the various classes in the Legendary Edition of the Mass Effect Trilogy. We're going to be discussing the various classes in alphabetical order and tailored for the Insanity difficulty. So we're going to start things off with the Adept. As one of my favorites, a lot of people ask, why are there no bad biotic characters in the Mass Effect games? Well, it's because they're all adept. But bad jokes aside, the adept is the biotically enhanced individual, which in the Mass Effect series means a space wizard. This is your de facto quote unquote magical class seen in most other RPGs. Biotics in these games are mainly used to debuff and crowd control enemies rather than killing them outright. So let's see how the adept evolves from game to game, and let's get started with how it plays in Mass Effect 1. So kicking things off here in Mass Effect 1, you have a wide variety of biotics to play around with. From Singularity pulling unshielded enemies into a mini black hole, to Warp destroying armor and applying damage over time, and even Barrier shielding you for a massive amount, you have a tool for almost any situation. The first skill tree here is your armor, and the Adept can only receive light armors for the entire game. It is well worth to put any extra points here when you can. Their survivability bonuses are small, but the main ability, Shield Boost, helped me in ton of situations. Being able to recharge shields at will along with a barrier turns the Adept into a pseudo tank for a time. Being able to change the outcome of fights, moving cover to cover without taking a ton of damage. The next ability is your weapon specialty, in this case, pistols. In the Legendary Edition, you're not just stuck with pistols, you can equip one of each weapon, greatly reducing the amount of danger from long-range enemies and from short-range enemies. The only downside from having all those weapons is that your class weapon tree does not apply to any other weapons except pistols, so all of those weapons will just be base damage. But in my opinion, the versatility more than makes up for that downside. The ability you receive from this tree is Marksman, purging all the pistol heat on use, increasing accuracy, damage, and a headshot bonus is added. To be completely honest, I hardly use this skill. From being able to use different weapons here in the Legendary Edition and the Adept being skilled in Biotics, I rarely use the pistol to begin with. Next ability is Throw, the basic Biotic Push. You throw a concentrated mass effect field at an enemy, throwing them away from you with a force multiplier that is upgraded as you put more points into the skill. It is very useful for husks and other enemies that like to charge in your position, given that you strip their outer defenses first. It gives you time to find another position and find another cover spot. Next up we have Lift, an immobilizing ability that lifts an enemy up in the air and they take damage based on how far they fall when it wears off. In my playthrough, I use Singularity more than Lift, mainly because of the radius increase of Singularity and being able to tag multiple targets, but Lift can work in a pinch. A warp is the next ability, and this is probably the most useful ability overall. It applies a damage over time effect, along with stripping defenses off of enemies, this ability is invaluable on insanity, just for taking care of the added armors and barriers that even the regular enemies get. Another very useful ability is the Singularity, creating a mini black hole pulling enemies in and making it easy for hitting other abilities in a close proximity, or just firing on them with your guns in a tight spread. Barrier is our penultimate biotic ability for the Adept and it provides a very useful bonus. By adding a biotic barrier that can absorb up to 1,000 points of damage at the, its max rank. At four points, barrier will provide more shields than the best light human armor, 
making it a more attractive defensive talent than basic armor and shield boost. But just be aware that shield boost can recharge your shields in a pinch, so don't forget about it. However, once the barrier runs out, the character will be quite vulnerable, so be wary of cooldowns and running straight into enemy fire. The last ability for the Adept is Stasis, encasing the enemy in a very heavy Mass Effect field, weighing them down, but making them invulnerable to all damage coming in, but also making them unable to act. A very good combo for difficult enemies is to use Warp first, then Stasis, as the damage over time from Warp still affects the enemy, just making them unable to move while still taking the damage. Overall, in Mass Effect 1, firefights begin with getting rid of enemy armors using warp or overload from your squad mates, and then going for the most difficult enemies with your crowd control, then taking out all the smaller enemies while the bigger ones are CC'd, and with the CC wearing off, transitioning to the bigger enemy. This tactic worked very well for me all throughout the game on Insanity. Picking squad mates in Mass Effect 1 comes down to a handful of choices. Garrus, Tally, and Caden can use Overload to get rid of shields and getting some combat damage through, like Ashley or Rex. Liara was my most unused crew member because as an adept, she feels very redundant. She has most of the same skills, she brings no additional weapons that you don't already have so I do not recommend using Liara. The majority of my playthrough consisted of using Rex and Tally, subbed with Garrus, because with Overload and AI hacking on one side, and a regenerating Krogan with an additional biotic power on the other, this team was very well-rounded. But now we're transitioning over to Mass Effect 2 and seeing how well the Adept does. Here in Mass Effect 2, Biotics is much more streamlined, just like a lot of abilities and skill trees. You now have two crowd control options, with the rest doing straight damage. Starting out the tree is Singularity, being the same as Mass Effect 1, pulling unprotected enemies around a mini black hole and keeping them there until the power expires. The most useful part about this ability is its insta-kill effect for husks, and this helps out so much later in the missions on the Collector Ship along with the Derelict Reaper. Next up we have Warp, changing slightly from the first game. Now it applies a burst of damage instead of damage over time. It stops health regeneration and is incredibly useful against armored and barriered enemies, denoted in this game by the yellow and purple bars respectively. One more fun thing about Warp is its ability to cause a biotic explosion. If you use Warp on an enemy affected by Singularity, Pool, or Slam, it triggers a huge explosion. Throw is our next skill, not really changing from Mass Effect 1. Throwing out a Mass Effect field to ragdoll an enemy is always fun, and it gets enemies off of you in tight firefights. Damage is increased to already crowd-controlled targets, been affected by pull, singularity, or even frozen enemies. Shockwave is our last damaging ability, and it's kind of a mix between damage and crowd control. You unleash a wave of biotic explosions down a line, knocking up unarmored enemies and dealing slight damage. This ability can be useful to take out husks and can be used through cover to make enemies stagger for a brief moment to hit them with other abilities or gunfire. Biotic Mastery is your passive skill tree and it increases your reputation scores along with reducing recharge times on abilities and increasing your health. The rank 4 determines whether you receive more power damage with the Nemesis option are maxing out the health and reputation bonus with the Bastion option. And finally, for your option and bonus powers given that you beat the game already, I personally went with Energy Drain to give my Shepard more coverage and being able to take down any defense. But other notable options are Barrier benefits from Adept bonuses already taken in the class skill tree, along with massively increasing survivability. Warp ammo increases damage done to affected enemies by biotics, so it can help 
greatly boost your gun damage. Lastly, with the Legendary Edition, everyone has access to Lair of the Shadow Broker DLC, and that means you can pick up Stasis. It works the same as in Mass Effect 1, preventing the enemy from being damaged, and from damaging you. You can use Stasis on heavily defensive targets like Ymir mechs, Skions, and it gives you time to breathe and to take out the smaller enemies trying to rush you at the same time. Weapon choices in Mass Effect 2 are now the most limited in the Legendary Edition, with the Adept only having access to heavy pistols and submachine guns. I personally use the Carnifex pistol along with the Locust from Kasumi's mission. Heavy weapons in this game are heavily dependent on how you play, with the Arc Projector taking down multiple enemy shields with ease, and the M920 Kane dealing a massive, heavy blow to a boss. You can't go wrong with most heavy weapons. The one I would steer clear away from is the Firestorm. You don't want to be in the short range it has to hit enemies with it. Pick literally anything else. Squadmates are very important choices to pick in Mass Effect 2, with shields being one of the only defenses adepts can't penetrate. Garrus, Miranda, and Kasumi work well with their overload skills, but I usually ended up with Garrus because he also has long range capabilities. The second squadmate should be someone with a lot of damage output, like Zaid, Thane, or Grunt. These all work well, and I personally went with Grunt just because I like how tanky Krogan can get. But with all that being said, let's move on to the final game of the trilogy, Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 changes a lot of the combat, bringing it more in line with a straight up action game than a role playing game. And with that, the Adept can truly be a biotic god. Using a low cooldown build and just using submachine guns or pistols keeps recharge time at around 200%, making you churn out biotics faster than you can blink. A very welcome addition here is biotic explosions for all skills, not just warp this time. You need a power with a duration stat like singularity, pull, etc, and a primer skill, something that damages or has a force multiplier, like warp, reeve, or throw. These massively increase the damage and force that the primer power is deal, so always try to have these biotic combos up and ready. One more thing to note in Mass Effect 3 is the addition of different upgrade paths for every ability starting at rank 4. These can massively impact how abilities work, so keep in mind how I built my Shepard may not be the same as yours depending on how you upgrade your skills. Starting out the list for Mass Effect 3 is the Singularity, one of the best setup moves for biotic combos and one of the best staggering abilities to deal with guardians and other heavy enemies. You can upgrade it for more duration, leaving enemies staggered for longer, or for it to deal damage to enemies already caught up in it. Next up, we have Pull, another crowd control ability that can pull enemies towards you. I like to use pull in conjunction with singularity because a lot of the Cerberus missions, guardians come at you at pairs or even more than that, and pull can get rid of the shield while knocking up the other one with the singularity. Shockwave is back in its middle of the ground glory, making it hit through cover, staggering enemies, and new to three detonating biotic combos. In its rank 6, you can even add a lift effect to the shockwave, further increasing the crowd control from it. The row is up next, making it the perfect way to keep small enemies off you with its very low cooldown. Combining throw with the target affected by pull or singularity can throw them out of the playable area completely eliminating them. I went with a more combo detonating throw with the rank upgrade 5 resetting recharge times on combo detonation, and the rank 6 double throw for more people to fling out of the arena. Warp is still one of the best ways to strip defenses on insanity, and can also be bent around covers and corners, 
and with one of the upgrades leaves the enemies mo more vulnerable to all incoming damage, making it invaluable in the Adept's arsenal. The Cluster Grenade is the class grenade here, and it is very good at detonating combos, with each split of the grenade being able to combo off. You can also focus the grenade onto a big enemy, like a brute, and have them all explode to deal massive damage to one target. Fitness is a brand new passive ability introduced to every class here in Mass Effect 3. It increases your health, melee damage, and shield recharge time. I rarely put points into this, rather I focused my points into the main abilities of the Adept. If the enemies are dead, they can't hit you. Biotic Mastery is your class passive and it increases your reputation bonuses, power damage, and the weight capacity of weapons you can bring with you. With the later upgrades, you can increase your power damage, duration of powers, squad damage, your squad mates powers, and the final upgrades further increase your damage and duration of your powers, or your recharge time when detonating biotic combos. Picking a bonus power is not very important here in 3, because you can change them for just 5,000 credits. Have your points refunded, but if you had to pick only one or two, I would go with Barrier or Dark Channel. Barrier is great for survivability, and Dark Channel lasts for an extremely long time, 30 seconds or even more, giving every throw against the target a biotic combo. Weapon choices here mainly depend on the adept you want to play. If you want to play the biotic combo route, go for submachine guns and pistols, keeping that recharge time as close to 200% as possible. Assault rifles can also be used as long as you're upgrading them in the Normandy to reduce their weight. Snipers and shotguns usually weigh too much, but good choices in those categories include the Viper, and the Disciple, respectively. Squad mates in Mass Effect 3 depends on the difficulty. On lower difficulties, you can pick Liara or Javik and absolutely go to town with biotic combos. On higher difficulties like Insanity, however, I always recommend picking squad mate with Overload and having someone like Edie for her decoy drawing fire away from you. But a lot of the squad mates in Mass Effect 3 are very well rounded, so just pick who you like. And with that, my first Mass Effect Legendary Edition guide is finished. What is your favorite thing about Adepts? Leave them in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this guide. And subscribe to see the rest of the classes as I'm completing them. Thanks everyone for the watch, and I'll see you again for another video here at the Forge.